This episode of Lifehacker is brought to you by Gazelle. Welcome to Lifehacker. This week's episode is all about cutting the cord and going wireless. We're going to learn to hack your Apple TV to replace your cable box, find out where to watch sports online, wirelessly sync your Android and iOS devices, and much more. So let's get started. Out of the box, the Apple TV 2 is a pretty good replacement for your cable box, but it could be better. Turns out, just like the iPhone, it runs iOS, and like any iOS device, it can be jailbroken. Here's how that works. First, you of course will need your Apple TV 2, and then you'll want to download an application for Mac or Windows called Season Pass. Once you've got Season Pass downloaded, uh, run it on your desktop, uh, and you'll need a micro USB cord to connect your Apple TV to to your desktop computer, and then just follow through the steps on your screen. It's actually a pretty simple process, and when it's done, your Apple TV 2 will be jailbroken. The first thing that I did once I jailbroken my Apple TV was install XBMC. We've talked about XBMC before on the show and shown you some of the things you can do with it, such as stream your videos or music from your home computer to your big screen, uh, and you can even use it to watch the Lifehacker show. One of the main things that keeps people from ditching their cable box is that they can't watch sports games online. Fortunately, there are a few ways that you can actually do that. There are services you can pay for, like NFL Sunday Ticket, MLB.TV, NBA Unlimited Pass, and NHL Game Center Live. In addition to being very costly, one of the downsides of these packages is that you have a lot of blacked out games in your area. In order to get around these sorts of restrictions and watch whatever you want, you can use a very popular piece of software that we like called Tor to set up anonymous browsing sessions and get around these restrictions. In theory, this will let you watch pretty much any game you want, local or otherwise, but it doesn't always work for everybody, so your mileage may vary. If you're looking for something more niche, like say rugby, you can go to a place we like called First Row Sports, which has streams that people have posted online and you can find pretty much anything. It's not necessarily the most legit source, but it's a good place to go if you can't find what you're looking for elsewhere. Apple's AirPlay is really cool. It lets you stream audio between your computer and any stereo in the house, or video between your iOS devices and TVs. Unfortunately, in typical Apple fashion, it only works with a few specific devices. So if you want to stream audio from, say, your Android phone to your stereo, or stream video to your computer, you're kind of out of luck. Luckily, with a few simple apps, you can stream media via AirPlay between virtually any two devices in your house. Here's some of our favorites. If you want to stream media to your computer, you can download a small server app like SharePort 4W on Windows, or AirMac on OS X. You can even stream to Android with an app called AirBubble, or stream video from Android with the popular Double Twist app. And, while many iOS devices support AirPlay streaming out of the box, if you have an app that doesn't support AirPlay streaming, you can start playing the media, open up your system volume, and then stream it to AirPlay from there. You'll probably need to do a bit of digging to find an app that fits with each of your devices, but once you've found them all, you can probably stream audio and video to and from any device in your house. Hit the link to find out more. Apple unveiled their new iPhone, the iPhone 4S, which packs a new A5 processor, a faster GPU, and dual GSM and CDMA radios for world phone capabilities, all in the same design as the iPhone 4. The 4S was the only new piece of hardware in Apple's announcement, but they also lowered the price of last year's iPhone 4 to $99 on contract and made the iPhone 3GS free on contract. The most interesting update, however, is Siri, the voice-activated assistant Apple is packing into the 4S. It allows you to control your phone by having conversations with it. You can tell it to check the weather or movie show times, have it read you an incoming text, or even compose a new text for you. Google's got a solid voice control tool built into Android called Voice Commands, but Siri's back and forth conversation style and access to all of your phone's information looks like it could be a great step in voice control technology. 
series is limited currently to the 4S, so we haven't gone hands-on with it yet, but check out our post for more details. If you're tempted to upgrade and have last year's model, be sure to check out Dodge's guide on how to upgrade to the newest iPhone for free. iPhones are expensive, even on contract. The newest model starts at $199. But if you're not eligible for a new carrier contract, the price balloons up as high as 650 bucks. If you've kept your iPhone in good condition, however, you can actually resell it for more than you originally paid, as long as you know how to sell it and where. Be sure to check out the post for the full guide. Next up, Whitson figured out just how much PC tweaks can affect gaming performance. It's commonly believed that the right software tweaks can go a long way toward a better gaming experience, but some tweaks are better than others. He ran through a slew of tests from disabling OS visual effects to updating your drivers to overclocking your CPU. Check out the post for the full results, but there's no free magic bullet. If you want to significantly increase your performance, you're going to have to upgrade your gear. Finally, Adam Dachis wrote up a comprehensive primer on investigating people on the internet. Odds are you probably use the internet to do a quick surface level check on a coworker or roommate, but if you're looking to take your internet stalking to the next level, you need to read his full guide. Adam runs down everything from how to find public records to the best people search engines to how to infiltrate a private Facebook page. Check the post if you want to know the details, but be careful, you might find out something you wish you hadn't. Modern smartphones can do just about anything, but when it comes time to put music on them, a lot of times you have to plug in to sync the music over. It's a bit of a pain, and there are actually ways that you can sync music wirelessly. We're going to talk about how to do that on iOS and Android. For a while, when you wanted to sync your iOS device wirelessly, you had to jailbreak it and install something called Wi-Fi Sync, which is a really great option, but now in iOS 5, you don't have to do that anymore. It's built right in. You just go into your settings and into the general section, and there's an option called iTunes Wi-Fi Sync, which will let you sync all your iTunes stuff wirelessly over the air. The only caveat is that your phone has to be charging at the same time that you're syncing wirelessly. Other than that, so long as you're plugged in, you're good to go. If you're using an Android phone, there are a number of different options for syncing wirelessly, but the two best we've found are Winamp on the desktop and iSyncer if you use iTunes on your computer. Here's how they work. For Winamp, just open up Winamp on the desktop, make sure your Android phone is on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer, and hit the Discover button. After you've paired your phone to your computer, you should just be able to sync your entire library over or drag and drop music as you see fit. If you use iTunes on the desktop, you'll want to download a program for both your phone and your computer called iSyncer. It's incredibly easy to use. Once you're connected to the network, you can just sync any number of playlists from iTunes right to your phone. Both of these methods will let you play the music with any music player, not just Winamp, so you can use something like the music player that came with your phone or our personal favorite, PowerAmp. Your third option is to use a service like Spotify on your phone. Uh, we've talked about Spotify a lot in the past, and basically if you are a premium Spotify member, you can download the app to your phone. It will have all of your playlists on it. You can take anything offline by just pressing a button. And yeah, you can sync everything wirelessly. It's all cloud-based, so you don't really have any problems about syncing to a computer or anything. If you aren't so keen on paying for Spotify, you could also try something like Google Music, which is currently free, and you can upload all your music from your computer to the cloud, and it can sync down to your phone as well. So there you have it. No matter which method you prefer, there are plenty of great ways to sync music to your phone without wires. It's time to thank this week's sponsor, Gazelle. Now look, it's pretty simple. You've got gadgets, gizmos, and games that you want to get rid of, and the guys at Gazelle, they want to buy them. Gazelle buys over 200,000 kinds of electronics, games, and gear for fair prices. They pay super fast, and in most cases, they even pay the shipping. The iPhone 4 is here, and the Nexus Prime is right around the corner. Now, Gazelle is only going to buy a certain amount of old iPhones and Android phones, so you want to go to gazelle.com and lock in your price right now. It couldn't be simpler. Just go to gazelle.com right now, see how much your stuff is worth, and get paid. All right, it's time for the downloads of the day. Let's see what we've got. First up, we have Air Server, which turns your Mac into an AirPlay host. This means you can stream videos, music, and other AirPlay-compatible streams directly to your computer's display. This is great if you have a Mac for a home theater PC. 
Next, Connectify Pro can turn your Windows PC into a Wi-Fi hotspot so other devices can easily share your connection to the internet. Normally, Connectify Pro costs $30, but if you're a student, you can grab it for free until January 1st, 2012. If you're not a student, Connectify Lite is always free. If you're looking to share your cellular data connection on either your Android or iPhone, there are a couple of apps that can help you out. On Android, you can get the job done with PDANet, but you'll have to look outside of the Android marketplace to get it. On iPhone, you'll need MyWi, but it will require jailbreaking to function. If you need to jailbreak, be sure to check out our always up-to-date guide. And that's it for this time. Hopefully we've cut some of the cord clutter from your life. For more, check us out on lifehacker.com, subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash lifehacker, or subscribe to us in iTunes. We'll see you next time.